inspired by Greek myths and Philomel. It's, it's about a woman who changes into a nightingale. It's quite gory, <laughs> but um, it's not it's not programmatic. I didn't try to portray things in the story. It just gave me ideas. When you have to get down to writing the music itself, you don't have time to think about concepts. You have to write the music. So. Andrew is at Oxford University and a pupil of Steve Martland. What's been marvellous is the way they've all attended the sessions. Um, I know they're supposed to, but um, human nature being what it is, things don't always work out like that. And they've become good friends over this period, and they've really cared about each other's work. Uh, they really have. That's really refreshing. I came to write Mirage two years ago. I was on holiday in Israel and I was inspired by the, the heat of the country and I wanted to reflect that in the piece. One of the most common oversights was not giving enough information. I mean, the player will see a long legato line marked piano, but they won't necessarily feel free to put in expressive ups and downs within that unless the composer has written that. They probably would in Mozart, because they're expecting everything like that to be understated. But in contemporary music, players do expect to have everything there on the paper. The microtones are very difficult to read, actually. You know, you, you really need to sort of look at them to digest exactly what it, what it means. Mm -hmm. They've got very little idea at the moment, and, and what they're doing is playing in quite a classical style and feeling pro probably uncomfortable about the quarter tones, mm. yes. because it's going to sound to, to, to an audience as if they're playing out of tune, so they're reluctant to do it. Yeah. That. If you can lead them towards an understanding of why you've written the quarter tones, by the, the instruction you give them as to the manner yeah, in which it, to play? The way in which it's be played is essentially as raw and as uncooked as possible, really. Just so maybe just cut out a lot of the... Yes, it's as un, un, yeah. unnice, just not nice at all, just really, yeah, just go for it. Just don't be afraid of it. Microsoft, yes. Right, yes. A rougher sound, very yeah, rough, a more very folky, rough, rough sound. Uh, Joby Talbot composes and plays in the band The Divine Comedy. His work Animization uses the same instruments as one of the classics of 20th century chamber music, Edgar Varese's octet, Octandre. I'm an oboist, and I chose a particularly beautiful oboe melody from the third movement, um, and based the entire piece on that. It's quite straightforward. I divided the, 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 uh, the melody into three, 
um, and used one chunk for each movement. That's, that's the, more the tempo. Could we have um, more trombone, do you think? Yeah. Um, all through that section, because um, it needs to, it, it gives the sort of the pulse that ba, 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 ba. So if you could sort of mark it, mark it up to. to um, have you got an iron lung handy? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Do you have um, any comments I about that trombone part? It's it just, just too much without a break, without a bar. Is it, um, is it, make, does it, having the mute make it even more difficult? Yes, you're you pushing it against it, resistance. Mm -hmm. Sorry. We play usually about two and a half bars and then rest for 50. <laughs> 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 this is 50 bars and the rest for two and a half beats. Sorry. Uh, you know, it's sort of right, trombonists are very hardy. Well, I, had, I asked for advice from, from a trombone friend of mine who was very massive about the whole thing. He said, oh, trombones play forever. How old is he? <laughs> 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 I think J.B. Talbot's piece is a very good piece, but there are, I think, certain orchestrational things which you really, I think, that any composer really has to learn from the players, and you can't really learn these things in books. And, you know, this, this is what this workshop's been about, and I don't think that the composer should ever be ashamed about making a mistake for orchestration, because, after all, everybody here is very young. And, you know, players, players make enough mistakes, so I think that it's okay for a composer to make a few. We're all faced with the the same problems as composers, and to see how everybody else uh, approaches them is useful. And then also to hear your, my, well, my piece actually played beautifully well. I mean, it's so incredibly revealing. I'd forgotten why I'd written the piece. Um, I'd decided, really, that I thought it was a load of rubbish. <laughs> and, uh, and I was so pleased this afternoon to have actually realised that I, no, I was right. It isn't. It's lovely. We do so much contemporary music. We're doing it all the time. We're always doing first performances. I don't know someone's counted up how many a year but it, uh, it's a lot we, we do them quite regularly so um, anything that's encouraging the future providers of that is obviously a good idea Cheryl Frances Hode an accomplished cellist is a pupil at the menu in school where she also studies composition very melancholy and after it get more and more sort of frenzied and that sort of frenziness to turn into sort of violence <laughs> I wanted to sort of gradually build up and become more and sort of twisted and evil at that point yeah. Twisted and evil, yes, yeah. right. Is this a, not a programmatic piece, is it? I mean, mm. I mean, it's got no sort of text or anything. No. I mean, it doesn't relate in any way to how I was feeling. I Good. Mean, <laughs> Peter Dixon play it was very interesting and I love the way he plays it and it was incredible I mean I think he only got it quite recently and he must have practiced it really hard um, I would have played it quite differently but not it's not a matter of better or worse um, just tiny inflictions in the sound or something but generally I mean I do love the way he plays it <laughs> I'm hoping 
because to get a lot of feedback from the orchestra, I mean, particularly the percussion, because I've never written for percussion before and I just learnt it out of a book, really, so I have no practical experience. There's one section in the Cheryl Francis Hode that she obviously, I don't think she'd written for timpani before, and she's gone way beyond the limit of what is possible on the timpani. Having said that, the piece as a whole is the one I like best anyway. It's, I think it's a brilliant piece, except for this one bit where she's written something impossible for me. But um, we had a talk about it and she was happy with what I was doing with it. So uh, it's all hunky-dory in the end. Okay, we've got a um, timpani question. Yeah, right. We'll do it now. It's just too many notes in too short a space of time. I mean, you can see that sitting here, I have to use the, the actual bit with the hands. It's no problem. It's the feet that is the problem. I'm having to play up here while changing down there. Um, so how, how long does it take you to change the pitch? Uh, that can be done fairly simply. Right? Like that. But it's very complicated to explain, but if you... You've got to play over here and change down there for something to prepare a note. What we could do is decide which are the essential notes, yeah. four of them to start with, yeah. and you fix them like a harpist would fix pedals. Yeah. So if Cheryl can come up with an ideal sequence, which will suit yeah. both of you, is that a good That's idea? Fine. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. Seventh. Yeah. That's what you want. <coughs> Um, Cheryl's just pointed out that there's a passage on page three in the score where the, the soloist has glissandi. What did you just say? You wanted a more moaning sound. Is that what you said? Can the whole thing, um, all of this passage be more sort of agonised, really? Yeah, absolutely. A wailing. Yes. Right. Well, all of it. Yeah. Right. I couldn't be too all difficult. <laughs> I think the ability to write a large-scale piece like that, at that age, to structure it so fantastically, and the, the, the quality of orchestral writing, I thought, was just magnificent. I was thrilled. Happy? Yeah. We'll sort it out. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Super. I think it's tremendous, and I think it deserves to be played again to the general public, because they, you know, they shouldn't be deprived of a work like this. I think it's really special. <laughs> well, Christopher's written quite a lot more music, actually. Yeah. Where are you studying? I'm at Royal College. Oh, right, yeah. There were no prizes in this year's Lloyds Bank Young Composers Workshop. Instead, some of the 12 were to be offered commissions to write more music for the BBC Philharmonic. The four workshop leaders and conductor Martin Brabins were to make the decisions. No easy task. Oh, that's great. What would the criteria be for selecting compositions which deserve to be given further encouragement? I'd say it was to do with communication, to try and make music appeal to as many people as possible. Well, I don't know. I mean, Bach was a great composer, Beethoven, all of them, and, and they, they were the extremes. They weren't the... The, the middle of the road. I would hate to be in your position because <laughs> it's just. Can you actually say? Is it at all possible to say this is more worthy or this is better or anything like that? Is it a valid question?
The weekend culminated in public performances of all 12 works, and those concerts will be broadcast on Radio 3 starting next Saturday afternoon. What a fantastic officer. The judges have been able to commission some pieces from these composers tonight. So the first is Selina Kay. Second on the list is Joby Talbot. Third is Stuart McRae. And lastly, I don't mean this in any order of merit, by the way. They're just in this order. And the, the fourth one on the list is Cheryl Francis Hode. All the pieces will be performed in 1997, at some point, by the BBC Philharmonic, the strings of the BBC Philharmonic, and groups taken from w within the BBC Philharmonic. We've had a great time. Thank you, and good night. And as you heard, the first programme of orchestral music from this evening's workshop is on BBC Radio 3 next Saturday at 3.45. Guru of designer chic. Probably re-examine some of his film. You're 45. Yep. Do you remember what your poll age originally was? I heard there were jobs. You're so beautiful. Kate Winslet stars in the Academy Award-winning film The Reader, Sunday at nine on four.